Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my series on climatology. So in this session on climatology, we are going to learn about the fog and its various types. So let's understand the fog formation, the process. But before we go ahead, please like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share the videos with others as well. So let's understand what is fog and its various types and characteristics in this session. In the previous session, we talked about hydrological cycle, about evaporation, evapotranspiration and also the condensation and how it happens and various forms of condensation where we discussed a little about this fog formation as well. So in this session, let's discuss the details about it, its various types and its characteristics and how it forms. So this is what we generally observe if there is a road and you have this visibility issue we say it's foggy condition right in winter specifically so this is what we see the fog like so let's understand this in details now so what is a fog fog is a visible aerosol containing tiny water droplets or ice crystals suspended in the air so this is what we see is it is suspended in the air near earth's surface and Fog can be considered as what? A type of low-lying cloud. Remember in the last lecture also we talked about that it is very similar to cloud formation only but it is at uh, closer to the ground level. So it is low-lying cloud if we can say like that. Usually resembling what? Stratified clouds like stratus cloud, right? So that is important and it is heavily influenced by one important thing that is nearby bodies of water, topography, wind condition. Now remember these three factors are important here. It is influenced, it means it has a control of these things. So one is water body, the other is topography and the third is wind condition. Now, if there is lots of moisture because of a water body, if suppose this is a highway and the other low lying areas across or adjoining this highway are actually having lots of moisture, right? If the area is having the water depositions, this is contributing to the moisture. So then highway will have lots of moisture here hanging like fog right? Then topography is important. So if you see the mountain areas or if you see a slopey land and then you see rise of air along the slope. So here like a cloud, the fog also hangs. So similarly and also if the conditions of wind is stable, right? If it is wind is blowing fast, it means the stability is not given. So not much of fog will be there. So if wind is moving fastly or it is at high velocity, it will be clear condition, right? So what happens? These three factors are very much important and in turn, Fog has affected many human activities every year that we know. So activities like shipping, traveling, warfare, all these things are affected by fog conditions. And specifically, we have lots of road accidents in winters because of the foggy conditions, because, because of the poor visibility. So this is important. And fog when mixes with smoke, it also forms a smog situation, which is also hazardous. That's why fog becomes very much important to study and to understand. So the term fog, if you observe, it is typically distinguished for the more generic term of cloud that is fog is a low lying cloud if we say simply. So the moisture in the fog is often generated locally. So it is not coming from outside, it is from the local moisture that it develops near the ground. So such as from a nearby body of water, lake, ocean or from nearby moist ground or marshes or maybe also because of transpiration if lots of greenery is there, right? So if you observe this particular area of Chicago, remember this area is covered with entire fog right so this is how it looks and then furthermore we have different types of fog that we need to learn here so what are the various types of fog fog can be formed in number of ways that we know and depending upon how they form or how this cooling happens where condensation is happening there are different types of fog that we need to learn so types of fog will depend upon the process of condensation right that is why the fog will depend upon in what ways these hanging air cloud is formed near the surface of the earth so the first one is because of the radiation when it is formed so this is called radiation fog right so what happens here it is formed by the cooling of land after sunset by infrared thermal radiation in calm conditions now if you remember we have talked about radiation inversion of temperature so what happens if there is a cool calm condition longer nights so what happens this warm air through terrestrial radiation is actually going up and it creates a warm layer here right and what happens when it starts cooling 
Then what happens? It becomes a foggy situation here just near to the surface of the earth. So the cooling ground then cools adjacent air by conduction. Now remember what happens? Hot air goes away, land is cool. So this air which is near the land, automatically it will cool and it will condense. So what will happen? The nearby ground surface air will start happening the deposition of this moisture, right? In the form of this particular cloud formation like situation. So this is what we understand as fog. And remember what is important here? Again, the dew point. When the dew point is reached by this particular moisture near the ground, then this fog formation starts happening. And the only difference here is it is very close to the ground, but it is very similar to the cloud formation. Then the other types are ground fog. The name itself suggests this is near the ground. So it obscures less than 60% of sky. Now here is the catch right and does not extend to the base of any overhead cloud so it means it is basically talking about the air which is closer to the ground which envelops this particular viewpoint that you have right so it is also used as synonym for shallow radiation fog now remember obscurity level is less than 60 percent of sky so it is shallow it means it allows little insulation to actually come to the ground so that is important here and in some cases the depth of the fog is on the order of 10 centimeters over the terrain with absence of wind. So if wind is absent in that case it will have this particular percolation or what we say is that this air layer will allow this insulation to actually go in and also radiation to come out. So this is what we say is ground fog. Then advection fog. Now the word itself is advection when it is carried by that. Remember we have discussed about the process of advection. So advection occurs when moist air passes over a cool surface. So if moist air is passing over this cool surface, suppose if this is a land surface here, right? And on this land surface, cool air passes. So remember what happens here? The moist air passes over a cool surface by advection that is wind and is cooled, right? So surface is cooled. Moist air is here, when it gets into contact, it is also cooled and when it's cooled, remember what will happen. Again, the condensation will start happening. So that is where this kind of formation happens, which is called advection fog. Now remember who is carrying the moisture? Wind is carrying the moisture. So this carrying moisture is important here whenever we talk about advection. So it is like carrying something, right? So it is most common where, remember? where wind is carrying moisture near the sea. So most of this kind of fog we'll see where the areas of the cold water upwelling along the California coast, one of the examples that we see like San Francisco fog that we see is formed because of this factor that wind brings moisture, land is cool. So there is this entire area with foggy conditions happening, right? So that is called advection fog. Then what we have is the evaporation fog, also called steam fog. Remember the steaming, evaporation is important here. So it forms over bodies of water overlain by much colder air. This situation can also lead to formation of what? Something called steam devils. Why? Because these are weak whirlwinds. Remember the whirlwinds which are weak over water or sometimes wetland also. It looks like dust counterparts. So this is happening only because of this evaporation factor. So let's understand this is also known as something called lake effect fog. Now if there is a lake here, right? So what happens here? What you see in this lake effect, it is produced during cooler atmospheric condition. So if the atmospheric condition, this condition becomes cooler when cold air masses move across long expanses of warm lake water. So remember lake water, if it is coming from inside, remember it is warmer in condition, atmosphere is cooler in condition. So it will warm this particular air which will carry moisture. It will go up and here the situation is cool. So it will become cool. And when it becomes cool, again the fog formation happens over the lake. You must have seen in movies or you may have seen very many places in the pictures that many of the lakes will have this kind of hanging fog on it. This is what we say is lake effect and also steam fog or evaporation fog because of the temperature differences it is created. So this is important to understand here. Then what we have is the frontal fog. The name itself is frontal, frontogenesis. We have already understood about this. So warm front, cold front, there similarly like a cloud formation near the earth's surface, the fog formation happens. So that is called the frontal fog that is important. Then what we have is the ice fog, which is another example of what the name itself is. It forms in low temperatures and can be result of other mechanisms what you see here. So what are these mechanisms? Remember, sometimes the exhalation of moist warm air by herd 
herds of animals as well. So this is something which is very much interesting that if it is herds of animals in the areas where you have snowfall happening, there the moisture is released by these, you know, breathing also. So that is what is frozen on the surface, near the surface as well, right? So near the herds, you can find out such kind of ice fog also happening. And it can be associated with diamond dust forms of precipitation. Now, remember this catch word here. Diamond dust form of precipitation is when the fog also has ice crystals because of this particular situation, which is very low temperature on the ground, right? So in reports of MET, if you see, if you observe the reports of the meteorological department this code is given as ic right for the ice fog so meter code is basically ic for this ice fog in such lower temperature conditions so this often occurs during blue sky conditions where the entire terrestrial radiation is gone away there is nothing to stop this so ground temperatures start becoming really cool and this is where many types of halos and other results of refraction of sunlight where airborne particles also happening remember because this is like a crystal hanging in the air so what happens sunlight comes and it is broken into very much different strands of light as we know the prismatic situation happens here so many times different colors is also seen in this ice fog situation that is important to understand then we have the other types which is called freezing fog which deposits rime and is composed of droplets of super cooled water so remember this areas of super cool situation there you have freezing fog as well then the other name is precipitation fog remember if it is part of the precipitation that falls in the dry air below the cloud the liquid droplets evaporate and you know it becomes vapor again so this is a situation when precipitation happens but ground situation is very cool so suddenly it comes from the cloud the liquid and in between you have such a cool layer where it starts to freeze actually so this is where we see that the next one is what we say is precipitation fog and what is it it forms as precipitation falls into dry air below the cloud so if it is a cloud situation and here is a dry air if this water droplets falls in this dry parcel of air what will happen here cool air or dry air is there so again what will happen now here the fog will actually accumulate so this is important to understand here that the water vapor cools and at dew point it condenses and forms fog that is where it is called precipitation fog right and then you have something called hail fog remember this process of formation is all related to the same process reaching dew point condensation happening in different ways so the name is different so hail fog is where hail formation happens so sometimes occurs in vicinity of significant hail accumulations right so it often occurs when the warm humid layer atop the hail and when wind is light now this is the situation what you see so this is where this hail fog is formed the word itself is hail formation hail stones formation right so this is what we talk here and remember what happens increased moisture leading to saturation in a very shallow layer near the earth's surface so what you see more moisture is there and suddenly it freezes and it forms hail so the catch here is decreased temperature and increased moisture this is what you need to remember when temperature is decreasing abruptly but moisture is also increasing right so this is important that temperature falls down and moisture is actually gathering here and it is cooling and forming hail right so this is important here to understand that if this layer is above this hail layer which is warm and humid layer right and this is where this kind of hail fog formation happens and at last we have these three classifications as well which is upslope or downslope fog which is also called hill fog or valley fog remember sea breeze land breeze in that situation near coastal areas we have san francisco fog and when we see this temperature changes with altitude remember the valley fog we used to say so the temperature along the valley floor and what happens in inversion of temperature we have also learned about it the slopes and the valley have difference in temperature so remember that also leads to fog formation so in winters if you observe the valleys are covered with this entire thick layer of fog and upper layer is clear so this hill fog is also known as chain fog now this is c-h-e-y-e-n-n-e -E -E. so this chain fog and valley fog in california central valley is often known as tule fog now remember i may be pronouncing it differently for yourself we can remember the name this is chini fog and tule fog and these are the basic names for this only that is hill fog and valley fog that you need to remember 
Now, stem fog is what we have learnt about. It is also called Arctic sea smoke. If it is in the ocean areas or Arctic areas, remember what happens? The in the northern latitudes, the steam fog forms when water vapor is added to the air, which is much colder, and then condensation happens into fog. So what happens? The land is much cooler, right? And the area near the land is much cooler, but upper air is a little warmer. So temperature difference is there. So in Arctic areas, this happens, right? In extreme winters specifically, this is also called steam fog or Arctic sea smoke. So remember, for exam purpose, these words are important like chin fog, tule fog, arctic sea smoke. These are the names for various kinds of fog. For example, the last one is garua fog. What is this garua? Near the coast of Chile and Peru occurs when typical fog is produced by sea travels inland. Now remember, sea water is coming inland. So what happens here? The hot air meets the cool air. So what you see here is this formation of a fog here and nearly invisible. Now this is important to understand that this kind of fog is almost invisible. So yet it still forces drivers use windshield wipers because deposition of liquid is there on their windshield but it is not visible that if there is something in the way. So this many times leads to many accidents as well but this is called Garua fog very very specific to the Chile and Peru area that we need to remember. So now when we have learnt about the details of the fog, its formation, its various types and names in the sessions to come we'll be talking about smog formation which is related to fog formation only. So stay tuned, stay safe, all the best wishes.